Hey, praise the Lord, it's me once again, Brother Clinton, welcome to my office. It is the seventh day of the week, the 20th of February, the year of our Lord, 2016, 5776. And I would like to share with you a portion of a letter that I received today from a dear sister in the UK. And she says, she asks, I just wanted to ask you who can come into our house? And this sister is married, her husband is also serving the Lord, and so, is her, so are her children. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to ask you, who can come into our house? We're not in contact with the Baptist congregation anymore, and they wouldn't be allowed to enter in, would they, according to God's word? But are sinners allowed to come in like my parents and sister's neighbors? I want to obey the Lord, and this is on my heart to know the truth in this matter. Well, sister, this video is for you. You know who you are, and those of you out there who might be wondering the same thing. And let me just say that the reason that this sister asked this question is because of what is written in the scripture in 2 John verse 10. It says, If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. Okay, for he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. John was writing this letter to the church. And he was letting them know that there were many people out there who had different doctrines and served different gods, different made-up gods that they also called Jesus. And he says, well, let's just back up a little bit and to, let's read from verse 7, and that will reveal to us some of our answer. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And remember that same Apostle John said in 1 John chapter 4, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, where ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. And of course what John was talking about is the fact that Jesus Christ is the name of the Almighty God, which is the reason that the Son of God is also named Jesus Christ, <clears throat> because he got his name by inheritance from his Father, as the scripture testifies, for the Son of God himself said, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. So we know that the Son of God is called Jesus Christ because he got his name from his Father. Okay, The name Jesus Christ means the one which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty God who has come in the flesh to save us. That's what Jesus Christ means. And so when we say Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, what we're saying, what we're confessing is the fact that God was manifest in the flesh. The Almighty God, the only God that there is, the true and living God, who is a spirit, he, he came in the flesh. He was manifest in the flesh. His name is Jesus Christ, and therefore his son's name is Jesus Christ. And so it says in, in 2 John verse 7, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. See, and it doesn't mean that a person is unable to repeat those words. What it means is that they don't confess that. They don't. That's not what their confession is. It's not what they preach every day to people. That's not what they proclaim every day to people. But those of us who have the Spirit of God in us, we proclaim this. We speak it with our mouths on a daily basis. Do you know that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? Do you know that God, the Almighty God, came in the flesh to save sinners? That's what we preach to people. That's the crux of the gospel. Praise the Lord. So people that are Trinitarians, necessarily, and I'm not just picking on Trinitarians because there's lots of groups out there that don't confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, but this is one particular area that confuses people. And people that are Trinitarians, as I've said many times before, have a different Jesus than those of us who are Christians. To those of us who are Christians, the Lord Jesus Christ is the Almighty God who has come in the flesh. See, Jesus Christ is the name of the Son of God. The Son of God is the Son of God. He is not God the Son. He is the Son of God. He's not a person of a trinity. He is the Son of God. And God who sent him is in him. And therefore, when you see the Son of God, you see the Father who sent him. You see, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, as saith the Scripture. This is what a Christian believes about Jesus Christ. But what a Trinitarian believes about Jesus Christ, when a Trinitarian says Jesus Christ, he's talking about something totally different. He's talking about a God called God the Son, which is a separate God from God the Father. Okay, and even though he says that he only believes in one God, yet he says there are three persons called God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And he just said three gods, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And then he says there's only one God. Well, he's confused, either that or he's lying. And I don't think he's lying on purpose. I just think he's confused because he's in the darkness and he's been lied to by the enemy. So Trinitarians have a different Jesus than Christians do. To a Christian, Jesus Christ is the Son of God who is called by his Father's name, and in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. 
To a Trinitarian, Jesus Christ is a third of the Godhead, which is not God the Father, or as the, the other person they call God the Holy Spirit, it's just the, the person that they call the Son. And they don't understand that the Holy Spirit is God the Father, and that Jesus Christ is the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and therefore their Jesus is different than our Jesus as Christians. Just as the Jehovah's Witnesses, they have a different Jesus than we do as Christians. The Mormons have their own Jesus, different than the, than the Jesus Christ of the Bible. The Islamists have their own Jesus, which is different than the Jesus of the Bible. It's not the Lord Jesus Christ, you see. And, and Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 that if one comes to you preaching another Jesus, or by another spirit or another gospel, you might well receive him. See, well, there's lots of Jesuses. Okay? I live in Costa Rica. There's probably 10 guys named Jesus living on my block. Okay? There's lots of different Jesuses in the world, but there's only one Lord Jesus Christ. And so John said, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. And again, as I said to you a minute ago, or a couple minutes ago, this does not mean that someone who is of that spirit of antichrist cannot repeat the words, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Anybody can say the words, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. You know, there are those entertainers out there like Bob Larson and others who, who are like circus entertainers and pretend to cast out devils. And they, they when they put on these shows, they have these pretend de devils that are, that are, you know, supposedly manifest in people. And they say to the devil, is Jesus Christ come in the flesh? And then the, the pretend devil will go, no, no, Jesus Christ isn't come in the flesh. Because <laughs> they're putting on a show. That's ridiculous. A devil can say to you, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. A devil can say those words. The Pope can say those words. A Mormon can say those words. A Jehovah's Witness, an Islamist. Well, I doubt that an Islamist will, but he can repeat those words. If you write them down on a piece of paper and give it to him and say, can you say these words? Yes, he can say those words. Okay? It doesn't mean that a person who is of that spirit of Antichrist cannot say the words, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. That's not what John was talking about. He was talking about confessing that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Confession is something that comes from your mouth all the time. It's part of your daily life. It's what comes out of your mouth. That which is in, uh, in the abundance of the heart comes out of the mouth. And that's what confession means. Okay? For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This includes Trinitarians. Okay? They do not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. They might be able to say those words, but they don't confess that because they don't believe that, because they don't know who Jesus Christ is. You see? So, this is a deceiver and an antichrist. And the reason that I've said this is to just to illustrate exactly who it is that we're talking about. So he says, Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Okay? Be careful. Be careful. And, and, and hold fast to the things that you have received. Let no man take thy crown, John said in another place. And so then he goes on to say, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. Period. Okay, as if it needed any more explanation from the, from the couple of verses that we just read, John went on to explain even more clearly and plainly. And that's what I love so much about John's writings is that it's just so black and white. There's no gray area to it. There's no possible way to misunderstand it unless you're just in the darkness and you can't hear or unless you don't understand English. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. Period. No matter how religious a person may seem, no matter how popular he may be in his church, no matter if he's the pastor or <coughs> excuse me, or the deacon or, or the bishop of his entire region or the Pope of Rome or whatever, okay, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. Okay, period. If he's not abiding in the doctrine of Christ, he does not have God. He may speak in tongues, he may cast out devils, he may be a preacher, a famous preacher. He may cry when he prays, he may sing the best of everybody in the whole church, but if he's not abiding in the doctrine of Christ, then he does not have God. Period. And what's the doctrine of Christ? Well, it's the doctrine that is taught in the Bible concerning who Jesus Christ is and what he requires of his people, how we are to serve him. That's the doctrine of Christ. So, he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Praise the Lord. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. Okay. What does this mean? Does this mean that if a person who belongs to a Baptist church comes to your house that you're not allowed to invite him in? 
maybe to have them over for dinner or whatever, or sit down and talk. No, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that. What it means is that when a person comes to your house and brings a different doctrine, in other words, a person comes to your house with the intent of coming to your house to teach you his doctrine, which is not according to the doctrine of Christ, then you may not allow that person into your house. Okay, Neither bid him Godspeed. What does it mean to bid him Godspeed? It means to shake his hand, tell him God bless you, tell him have a nice day. To, to offer him encouragement in any way in that which he is doing is to bid him Godspeed. And if we bid him Godspeed when we know that he's lying to people and and bringing to people a different doctrine that will cause people's souls to be ensnared and, 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 and perish, then we cannot rightly bid that person Godspeed. Okay, and if you're in the Lord Jesus Christ, you understand this. You're a servant of the living God. You belong to the kingdom of God. And someone out there has made it his life's work to go out and lie to people, to destroy them, to lead them away from the kingdom of God, to destroy their souls. Well, it makes perfect sense that you would not want to bid that person Godspeed. You don't want to say to that person, well, have a nice day. Why would you say have a nice day to someone who is your father's enemy and who's in the business of destroying souls when you're in the business of serving the Lord Jesus Christ and trying to gain souls? See, why would you tell someone have a nice day? Why would you shake his hand? Why would you call him brother or sister? Why would you tell him God bless you when he's in the business of destroying the souls of men? You see, that man is not your enemy. I'm not saying for you to be mean to that man. I'm not saying for you to hate that man. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the spirits of wickedness in high places. This is what we wrestle against. So let us not get confused and imagine that the man or the woman that's preaching that false doctrine is our enemy because they are not our enemy. They are a man or a woman and they are worthy of honor and compassion just as we are. Okay, God causes his son to rise upon the good and the evil, right? And he causes his rain to fall upon the just and the unjust. So ought we to be that we may be perfect even as our Father in heaven is perfect. And if these people that preach a false doctrine, if they're hungry and they need something to eat, let us give them something to eat. And if they're thirsty, let us give them something to drink. Okay, but so well, I, that's very important. I want to make that perfectly clear. It is not for us to hate another man or to be angry at another man as if he were our enemy. To have righteous indignation for the evil that he's doing is one thing. But to have personal anger against him and take it out on him personally is another thing, and that's wrong. That's error. Okay. So if someone comes to your house and they're a Jehovah's Witness, let's just say that. Okay. Jehovah's Witnesses always get picked on. They love to get picked on. Uh, that's that's part of their their, their testimony. But um, if a Jehovah's Witness comes to your door, if the Jehovah's Witness is coming to your door, if he doesn't know you, okay. And say that if there's a Jehovah's Witness living next door to you and he comes to your door because his water just got shut off and he needs some water to drink or to, you know, to, for his children or whatever, okay? He's a Jehovah's Witness, yes, but he's not coming to your door to preach his doctrine. He's coming to your door so that he can have some water because he doesn't have any water. Would it be against the law of God for you to invite him in? Of course not. Invite him in. Don't let him preach his doctrine in your house. But invite him in. Say, oh, sure, come on in. Have a seat. I'll get you some water. Praise the Lord. And as you have the opportunity, speak the word of the Lord to him. And he should know when he comes into your house that you are a Christian and that you are going to be speaking the word of God to him. Okay? Not as a matter of uh, being mean to him and, and, and speaking it to him, knowing that it's going to hurt his feelings, but it's because that's what you do. You confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh because you have the spirit of Jesus Christ in you. Okay? So if that's the case, yes. Have a seat. Come and sit, you know, sit down. Have a seat. Let me get some water for you. And give it to him. Say, I give this to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And if I can be of service to you in the gospel of Jesus Christ, please never hesitate to knock on my door. Okay? But if a Jehovah's Witness comes to your door, and the purpose of his coming to your door is to preach to you his doctrine, then you cannot let him in your house. You cannot let him in your house. Because the reason that he's there is to destroy the faith of Jesus Christ. You see, not only to you, but to your children as well. And so you owe it to God, first, and to yourself, second, and to your family and your neighbors, third, to make it known that this man is not going to be allowed in your house as long as he continues to abide in a doctrine that is antichrist. But you can make it known to him, look, I can't invite you into my house because I'm a Christian. The scripture forbids me to allow you into my house to preach a doctrine that is not the doctrine of Christ. But I love you. 
And if you are interested in hearing about the gospel of Jesus Christ, I am a Christian, and by the grace of God, I am able to share it with you. And if you would ever like to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, you may certainly come over to my house, and we'll sit down in my living room, and I'll open the Bible, and I'll share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? With all due respect, I'm not interested in the doctrine of the Jehovah's Witnesses, and I can't receive that because it's contrary to the doctrine of Christ, but I can share with you the gospel if you like. That's the point that I'm trying to make to you, brothers and, brothers and sisters, is that this is not a, and this, this commandment of 1 John, is not a commandment for us to be mean to people because they don't understand the truth. This is a commandment for us to guard our house against someone who is purposely doing what the Lord commanded not to do. Okay, so if somebody belongs to the Baptist church that you used to go to, and they're confused and they don't understand the truth, and they come to your door, sister, I would never say that you should not allow them in your house. Now, if they want to come into your house and, and start preaching confusion, and disobeying the Lord, and dishonoring the Lord in your house, then yes, you must draw the line. Okay, my natural mother is not allowed in my house. That's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. Because she professes to be a Christian, and at the same time, she refuses to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. She refuses to dress like a woman. She continues to dress with, with men's clothes. And what I'm talking about is blue jeans. Okay? And she refuses to cover her head when she prays. She refuses to believe that God is one and not three. And because of that, I've shared the gospel with, her, gospel with her many times over the years. And there came a time about three or four years ago when I finally had to tell her, Look, I love you, and I, I honor you as my mother, but... I have to honor God first, and I, I can't allow you in my house anymore. Okay, and that didn't make her happy, but she understood. She didn't understand as far as agreeing with me that I was correct. She just understood in, in the sense that I have the right to do that, and she respects my right to believe whatever I want to believe. She doesn't understand why I do that, but she understands the fact that the reason that I'm doing it is because of my, my personal belief in God and not to offend her. Okay, but... My natural mother is lost. She's, she professes to be a Christian. She goes to a church. They have a prison ministry. They do all these things, and they're lost. They don't know who Jesus Christ is. Uh, they don't know how to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ to become a Christian. Um, they go into prisons, and they give all kinds of false Bible versions unto these prisoners and, uh, and tell them a false gospel. Um, she'll stand before the Lord and give account for that, but she's not allowed in my house. Okay, um, And so should it be with anyone in your life who wants to come into your house and impose upon your house that which is wrong according to the scripture. Anyone that wants to come into your house who is willing to respect your house and the fact that you say as I say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Anyone who is willing to respect that, you should be hospitable and willing to receive them into your house. Doesn't matter what they believe, if they're an Islamist, if they're a Jehovah's Witness, if they're a Catholic, whatever, we should be hospitable. Okay, and we should always be willing to teach and share the word of God with people and show our love to people. It is only in the event that a person who is not abiding in the doctrine of Christ has the desire to come into your house and pollute your house by preaching another doctrine or by doing things that are disobedient to the word of God that you just don't allow in your house. Okay, like if I have a neighbor and he wants to come over to my house and talk to me, praise the Lord, he can come and talk to me. But if he wants to bring his beer with him, he's going to be disappointed at the fact that I'm going to tell him he can't bring his beer in my house or he can't smoke cigarettes in my house or if he wants to curse and swear he can't talk like that in my house because this is my house my house my rules okay and this house belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ he is the head of this house and so if someone wants to come into my house and disrespect God or disrespect me because I serve God then that's where I draw the line and they can't come in my house but even if a person is in a false doctrine if they want to come in my house for something, they come to my door, I'm going to let them in my house, as long as they understand that they do not have the right in my house to disrespect God or to preach a doctrine that is contrary to the doctrine of Jesus Christ. But if they want my hospitality, praise the Lord. And if they want to come and hear the word of God, praise the Lord. How else are we going to preach the word of God to people unless we communicate with them? Okay, and this is why Jesus said in, in, in the Gospel of Matthew, let me see if I can find this real quick. I know it's in Matthew 5, 6, or 7. But I don't know exactly where. Um, oh, it's right here at the end of chapter 5. It says, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. But this is the part that I wanted to read for you. 
But if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? Yes, of course. And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. You know, a person that's lost in religion, uh, in a vain, false religion, the last thing that they need to see and hear from you is despite. Despite, that's not the, wrong, the right word. Um, hatred, rejection. Because that's not how Jesus operates, and that's not how we should operate either. If a person is in a false doctrine and they're, and they're lost and confused, they need what we had need of what Jesus gave to us. In other words, he came to us in love, and he told us to repent, and he gave us the truth of his word. And he said, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And those of us who desired more truth, he gave us more truth. And those of us who rejected the truth, he turned away from. Okay, But we should not be angry or bitter towards people that are under a false doctrine, that are in the darkness, because, you know, they're victims. They're lost, and they need to be saved. They don't need to be shunned. They need to be saved. The only ones who need to be shunned are the ones who are in that false doctrine and set themselves to be contrary to the kingdom of God and to try to come into your house to teach their false doctrine or to disobey God and dishonor God in your house. Those are the ones that need to be shunned. Okay, and they have it coming because their behavior is such that they they weren't they wouldn't um, they wouldn't learn from just a simple word. They had to have action, just like a child who is unruly. Some children are taught by it now, don't do that again, Johnny. And Johnny says, yes, sir, or no, sir, I won't do that again. He doesn't do it again. Well, sometimes Johnny is a little bit rebellious, and he continues to do it anyway until he needs a stick on the back of his thighs to correct his behavior. Okay. Well, some people can be that way as well. I'm not saying, saying that you should take a stick and beat Jehovah's Witnesses, <laughs> but uh, although it creates a funny cartoon picture in my head. But, of course, we shouldn't ever do that to anybody um, because of their religious beliefs. They're entitled to have whatever religious beliefs they want, but they're not entitled to come into my house and preach it or come into my house and do things that are contrary to the will of God, contrary to the rules that God set forth for us and that I have set forth for my, for my house. So I hope that makes everything perfectly clear. I know I've spoken a little longer than I intended to in this video, but I hope that I've made everything perfectly clear for you. And as always, if any of you have earnest questions, you're welcome to email me. My email address is always right below in the information box. And may this message be a blessing to you, sister who wrote, and to all, all those of you out there who are watching. I remain here for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's get ready. Jesus Christ is coming soon, and I mean soon.